Hi everyone, on the table at the minute I've got Kharkov Battles published by Compass Games. This is um, the third Kharkov scenario, so the German drive to retake Kharkov in March 1943. This is the first time that I have um, played the game and I thought I'd do an after action report at the end of every turn. It's not a huge number of turns in this particular scenario, um, I think it's five turns. And I'm kind of learning the mechanics as I'm playing through, um, looking to to learn all the different systems of the game, different how combat works, supply works, etc., etc. Um, I've done the first term. I'll come to that in a second. But yeah, it's basically um, I'm looking to learn about the game, um, start to learn all, all the rules, etc and uh, develop that sort of narrative through playing the game solo. So I'm playing both sides, um, just looking to sort of see that narrative play out through the mechanics and uh, learn the game as I'm going along. So in the first turn, um, the, uh, the Germans, the Axis powers were able... Oh, but actually before I talk about the first turn, I should talk about the objectives that the, the Axis powers have. So they have to take and capture Kharkov, this hex just there, and this hex just here, and then this location up here as well. So the Germans have got, the Axis powers have got a lot to do in a short number of turns. Um, they've already got off to a reasonable start. They've been able to push some of the Soviet forces back, especially in this area, sort of here and here. Um, the as you can see, there's not a huge number of counters on the hexes, um, and the stacks are very, very, very manageable. Um, and I have done, the Axis powers have done some prepared assaults, um, and they did some, get the terminology right, mobile assaults as well. So it gave me a good opportunity to sort of learn how those mechanics work. The Soviets have been able to, in their part of the first turn, have been able to push back a little bit though as well. Um, which has been quite interesting to see how they sort of how they how they fare. There are some mighty stacks here for the uh, Axis. These stacks here with the uh, Tiger counter. And it's got an interesting mechanic this game, where the Tiger counter at the top of the stack just gives a sort of um, a shift on the column to the advantage um, to the uh, to the Axis. So that's it's quite an interesting mechanic. And then the counters un underneath. Have their underneath sorry have their own sort of strength values as well um yeah so already got off to quite a good start it took me a little time to play the first a turn simply because i was constantly referring to the rule book just to make sure i'd got some of the rules down um as best as i could i'm not saying i've got every rule right yet by any stretch of the imagination but yeah quite an, uh, a fun engaging first turn already so i'm looking forward to playing the rest of the t of the, uh, of the turns Completed another turn, um, I realised at the end of the last turn that I shouldn't, as the Germans, they shouldn't have been able to have done a um, mobile assault because I, I'm pretty sure I read that if the weather is mud, which it was, you can't do one of those. Oh well, never mind. These things happen in war. So... Um, this last turn, uh, the the axes have made good progress. At least, I think they're making good progress um, at the moment. Time will tell. Um, the Soviets doggedly uh, uh, proving some resistance in a few areas. Interestingly, in the Soviet, um, so there's some progress in this sort of area here. There are still some Soviets in this sort of sections here. Um, interestingly, when it came to playing the Soviet turn, and um, I'm pretty sure I've got the rules right here, the Axis sort of have their phase before the Soviets do every single turn. When it came to the Soviet section, the phase, whatever you want to call it, I kind of realised as the Soviets, they probably should have started moving more um, infantry, which is predominantly what they have, um, units into the areas that they need to defend sooner than I had thought originally which is quite which is proven quite an interesting part of the scenario because I've realized that the Soviets have realized that they've now started to do that so it's a bit of a race against the clock to see if they can 
reinforce these areas. They've been able to move some units into Kharkov. They've got a unit each into these areas here. But as you can see, the, the Axis forces are rapidly moving in on them. Um, kind of a when I was, when I was playing that that first turn, I think I was so eager to learn the mechanics of the game. Didn't think through enough about the um, what they should be doing, as it, as it were. But you know that the, that that in itself leads to an interesting scenario, which we, is what we are playing out now. So yeah, so still still a lot to fight for here. The we've just done. The second, I'll call it the second turn of the um, uh, of the uh, uh, scenario. So we've got quite, we've got still got a few more turns left to go. So we'll see what happens. So as you can see now, um, the Axis and German counters have been able to make moves on Kharkov. Um, we've got some um, counters here. Um, these Soviet counters were not given up so easily and they were able to push back these uh, attacking uh, German counters here. Uh, this sort of pocket over here, this part of the map, um, again, just dogged Soviet resistance, just holding on to that area there. It's been quite a good sort of tense few little battles there, which is great. Um, this is the end of turn three in this scenario we've got two more turns to play um, i'm pretty confident that the germans will be able to take kharkov it's whether they can reach these areas here in time and take that take those as well so we'll see so we completed another turn and the soviets are just not wanting to give up kharkov just yet so they've been able to repel the uh, the advancing attacking axis forces here um, this side, however, the Germans were able to push through, push the Soviets out across the river. And again, this side, the, uh, the Germans were able to advance on towards this uh, strategic point here. Now, um, this um, we've got one more turn to play. I think it's going to be going to be very difficult for the Axis to take. Um, they might be able to take this one. It'll be interesting to see. Certainly not probably going to be able to take this objective down here um, on the map. Sh hopefully should be able to use, take Kharkov. Um, I think we can use some air uh, air bombardments, etc. to maybe to try and secure these two objectives here. So what that tells me um, is that really in this playthrough um, the Germans just didn't push quite hard enough or as fast enough to gain as much uh, ground as they could have done. So that's quite interesting. But narratively, the game has played out really nicely and really well and it's been a lot of fun um, trying to, and I do I do enjoy sort of um, doing some of the battles that may be un unnecessary for, in terms of the scenario objective. So I would roll and do the battles over in this area, even though it has no bearing, just to play out the narrative of the sort of wider engagement um, that's been particularly satisfying. So yeah, good stuff. Um, so we'll do the last turn, see how it works out. So I've just played the last turn. Yeah, not so any great surprise. The Germans were able to take uh, Kharkov, push the last few uh, Soviets out um, for this uh, and take this objective. The, the same applies to the objective here, side of the map, but they were a little way off taking the last final objective, just couldn't reach it in time. Uh, they were also able to sort of repel the dogged, defense, uh, dogged Soviet defences on this side of the map as well. So um, that's the last turn. I think uh, the Germans would need another turn, uh, maybe two, um, to some of the Soviets that are coming onto the board here, um, to, to take the last objective, if I'm being honest. So yeah, that's the game. Uh, that's the game finished. I'll just sort of conclude, just uh, finish with some concluding thoughts. Yeah, so finished the game. Um, it it was, in fairness, a um, game that I wanted to use to help learn the rules a little bit. Um, I definitely think there were some rules that I probably got wrong. Um, 
and there were some probably some rules that I forgotten um, that I didn't include in my playthrough. So, for example, there were definitely times where I forgot that the mud clear counters cost two movement points for mechanized um, counters, for example. Um, and there's probably some of the bits and pieces that I, that I didn't quite get right. And that's okay because it often takes me several playthroughs of a game to sort of learn the rules. Um, and I play numerous games all at the sort of same sort of time, which sometimes means that I'll come to a game and play it and actually use the rules of the game. Been known to do that. So, um, but but the most important thing is to have fun and enjoy and engage in experience. And this was definitely that. Um, I really enjoyed the way the narrative played out over the course of the scenario. Didn't take long to play. You could play this scenario comfortably in an evening, no problem at all. It took me a little bit longer because I, like I said, I was referring to the rulebook quite a few times. What I will do next is I will um, put this game away, or put this scenario away again, sorry, re-read the rulebook and set the next scenario up and then play that through and hopefully by rereading the rulebook um, I will learn and go, oh yeah, okay, that's the way that's supposed to work. But yeah, I really enjoyed the really enjoyed this scenario for for a short number of turn scenarios. It's very engaging, a lot and a lot of fun. Found all the mechanics pretty. They all made sense um, to me, and uh, I particularly particularly like the prepared assault table, which is when you're doing combat and you use. And I'll show this in the, when I do a full review. But I particularly like that table, the way that. You use the columns depending on the um, terrain rather than having lots of modifiers to the dice roll. Um, you're actually sort of it's very clever, I think, how they how they've done that. So um, and there's you know I like the the sort of the strength point if that's the right word chits that go under the counters. I thought that might be a bit fiddly, but it's not. It's really not at all. Um, I really enjoyed that as well. So yeah, um, the one thing I would say from initial playthrough is. The counters are quite small and some of the fonts, so some of the text size on some of the counters is quite small. So you need to have pretty good, there were a couple of times where I kind of had to sort of, you know, uh, just take a moment to just, just, just to look at the counters. But um, yeah, very, very enjoyable experience. So yeah, I'm looking forward to playing it again, which is always a good sign. So thanks a lot for watching and uh, thanks again as ever.